Something about parenting, or when you have kids, that you that you begin to understand God's heart, the Father's heart, and um, uh, it's maybe what I want to speak about in today's in today's program. Um, you know, religion will always try and get you, will always try and get you to God, but but Jesus gets us to the Father. And that's and that's really what the gospel is 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 that we now have the privilege to be born of God to be called a a son of God a daughter of God a child of God at some point in your life you would have heard uh, someone say uh, there is no other way to heaven but through through Jesus right and uh, as much as what I believe in the reality of of heaven um, uh, I'd like to really in this program just communicate the heart of that scripture that is that is so obvious if you if you read through John 14 and I'm going to quote it right uh, you can pick up the story from verse 6 verse 7 of John 14 and he says I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but by through me now think about this it's not it's not communicated in that scripture that God is trying to um, get you to heaven through Jesus. He's trying to get you to the Father, which which means that God is looking for sons and daughters. All right, God is looking for children. His ultimate desire is is to have children, is to have sons and daughters. Do we really think that God desires people to get to heaven? Uh, like like He needs people to to live in unoccupied houses in heaven. Or maybe, like I said, um, he is actually just, his desire is children. Which really now questions motive. I'm, I'm going to ask you, you know, why are you serving God? Um, people will serve God, like I said, for that house in heaven. Because it's from, it, it's, uh, the gospel is presented in such a way that will say stuff like, you know, if you die today, where are you going to spend eternity? So we get people giving their lives to the Lord for the motive of having a house or having eternal life or an awesome afterlife. You know, it's like a gospel is presented in, in, in a way of fire insurance so that we don't, we don't burn in hell forever. But what about, i ask you, let's say, for example, we take away afterlife imagine that there's no afterlife that we just have life um, right here would you would you serve god would you worship god if we take away the fire uh, insurance you know um so often i wonder you know do people do people follow god for things like because he's good because he loves us you know has this really been communicated uh, the way that I believe Jesus was trying to communicate it in John 14. So even if you read John chapter 3, the famous chapter where it speaks about being born again, the context was miracles and wonders. Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he says, no man can do these things unless, um, unless God is with him. And then Jesus went on to reply and says, you must be born again. So, so in context with miracles and wonders and the great things that Jesus performed, he was speaking about, if you want to see this in this life, you must be born again. Which means that the reason to be born again is more applicable for this life than after. And uh, look, I mean, let's just speak about the whole born again uh, Nicodemus asked a fantastic question and he said how do I you know how do I get born again do I go back into my mother's womb and uh, most people laugh at that but I thought that it's actually a brilliant question which leads to a phenomenal revelation all right so if God is looking for sons and daughters it would require us to be to be born again we'd have to take on a new birth we'd have to be born of God 
Jesus answered Nicodemus later and he said, Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. So now we understand from John 4, Jesus explained to the Samaritan woman, he said, God is spirit. All right. Jesus said, what is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of spirit is spirit. So if I'm going to take on a, a new birth and to be born of God, it needs to be a spiritual birth. Right. So John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Why did he give his son? You know, because we, we understand, you know, if you in, in the Christian faith that there is, you sow and you reap. Right. So God gave to get. So he gave to to get a harvest of sons. And you can read that in in Hebrews chapter two. He says he, he purposed us to to bring many sons into glory. So God gave his only son. All right. So that he can have more children so that he can have more sons and daughters. <laughs> so now I don't go into into uh, Mary to be born of Mary. Obviously, Jesus was born of Mary. So I don't go in order to become a son of God like Jesus, a brother of Christ. I don't become born of Mary. Um, I've mentioned this in, in, in some of my other videos before and I encourage you to, to check them out if you want more um, in-depth teaching about this. But Romans 8 verse, verse 29 says, Those of whom he foreknew beforehand, speaking about me and you and, and, and creation um, in, in um, all people, God predestined us to be molded into the image of his son. Now, sh check that scripture out and it says, Share his likeness. Then it switches over to Jesus and says that Jesus may be the firstborn amongst many brothers. And now, so we must realize now that we take on a, a new kind, a spiritual birth. And we become what 2 Corinthians 5 or 17 says, a new species. We take on a new nature. Um, I, I love, I love uh, this, this scripture because it's, it suggests that anyone who is in Christ becomes like a never before seen um, creature, completely new creature, born of God, spirit by nature, all right, and uh, sons of the Most High God. In the last years, I mean, I've been serving God for about, about 12 years, maybe more, and uh, I've, I found, especially in the last couple of years of my of my Christian life, my can I say my education or my learning has been unlearning the things that I've I've learned in the faith. You know, um, uh, switching the emphasis from afterlife <laughs> to to life, switching the emphasis from one day to to possessing now, and uh, and understanding God's heart um, as in He desires sons. And he wants sons and daughters, and, uh, and and you know the famous scripture that Romans eight nineteen all creation is waiting for the revealing of the sons of God, and uh, I want to encourage you, you know, um, and remind you, um, God is not looking for tenants for unoccupied houses in heaven. Think about that. God wants sons and daughters. Jesus went on to speak in John 14 and he says, In that day you will be in me and I will be in you. And you'll be in the Father. The Father will be in you. And this is what God ultimately desired. So here's an invitation for you. Maybe you've, you've never got this one before. The invitation is, if you want to be a, a child of God, God loved you so much. He gave His Son so that you can become a child of God, become the son of the most intelligent being in all creation that is responsible for, for all of this, that you become a son of God, a son of God. Um, he gave his son, Jesus, so that he can have you. He saw the gold in you, right? And, and, and he sacrificed his son for you. So if you want to be a child of God, that is the invitation. And it's not trying to get you into heaven. 
It's trying to get heaven into you. It's trying to get God into you. It's trying to bring his fullness that, that God can be seen in and through us. And that is, that is the good news. And it's freedom. It's liberating. And, uh, and uh, until it comes into complete manifestation, and people and all creation will see it and it will bring freedom through this, to this wonderful planet, creation, universe. It's bigger than what you think. Check out my other videos. Let me know what you think. Remember to click the like button, leave a comment, and I'll be glad to, to have a chat with you. Bye-bye then.